Time for us once again now to have a Santa Clarita unsung hero on the air with us. This is our, uh, we do a, a couple of these every month. It's uh, sponsored by Mercedes-Benz of Valencia. It's an opportunity for us to uh, speak to people who you may not already know about here in the Santa Clarita Valley, talk about some of the things that they're doing uh, in our community to try and make things better here. And uh, it's sponsored by Mercedes-Benz of Valencia. You can find out uh, all about all the other people who have been named Unsung Heroes at hometownstation.com. We've got video and audio of uh, all those interviews posted online for you. Today, as founder and executive director of Project Kindle back in 1988, 1998, 10 years after that, <laughs> when she was still in college, Eva Payne has devoted much of her adult life to, uh, to helping teens and young adults with serious illnesses, special needs, and other life challenges. The nonprofit Project Kindle organization provides cost-free camping programs, year-round support and advocacy, recreational experiences, and peer-based HIV and AIDS education for young people aged 12 to 24. Eva founded Project Kindle in her native Nebraska and then opened the Project Kindle West Summer Camp in Santa Clarita in 2000. She does a masterful job directing Project Kindle while being a mother of six kids here in Valencia. And that's why Eva Payne is KHS's latest Santa Clarita Unsung Hero, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz of Valencia. Welcome, Eva. Thank you for uh, spending some of your afternoon with us. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Happy to have you with us. Now, to be honest, uh, Eva is not entirely unsung for her work with children impacted by HIV and AIDS. She's been a finalist in the Volvo for Life Awards. She has been honored by L'Oreal Paris as a woman of worth. She was recognized by the Los Angeles Business Journal, and she was profiled in DirecTV's Hometown Heroes series. So, Eva, let's let's start back at the beginning, back in Nebraska. Sure, okay, sure. talk about what your life was like in Nebraska. What were you studying when you were in college there? Um, I was actually studying quite a few different things, but broadcasting was one of my areas of interest, and theater as well. And um, I always knew I wanted to make a difference, and I thought I was going to go into either broadcasting or educational theater. Um, and I read a play about a boy who was impacted by HIV, and it just really sung true to my heart. And I thought, I don't really know anyone, but I um, felt drawn towards that particular cause. And would you say that's what motivated you to start Project Kindle? Is that one of the, one of the contributing Definitely factors? Definitely one of the contributing factors. I also grew up going to summer camps, and I got a job at a radio station one summer. I had been there for four years already, and they gave me a spot on the morning show. Oh. And so I couldn't go back to camp that summer, and I was so sad. I had this great job, but I was so sad that I wasn't singing camp songs and hanging out with kids. Right. And this idea of starting a camp four kids impacted by HIV or AIDS popped into my head. Um, and so that following summer, it took a year, I planned it, and then the following summer, we executed it in Nebraska. Um, we've been doing it, this will be our 15th summer running that particular program. That's great. It started out small, it now serves about how many How many teens, how many young adults, how many families? Well, we, we reach thousands of kids a year through our various programs. We've actually gone beyond HIV and AIDS, and we do a day camp here in Santa Clarita that serves kids with various health challenges um, beyond just HIV and AIDS. In fact, most of the kids that we have there are um, autistic or on the spectrum. So, and it's actually happening this week. I, I am in camp gear right now. Uh, we had our first day today out at Placerita Canyon Nature Center, and it was a success. And this is only our second summer running that program. So second summer with that program. Overall here in Santa Clarita, about how many kids do you serve? Uh, throughout, um, well, throughout we have about 100 summer. kids that we serve through our various programs here in Santa Clarita, and then nationwide, really thousands of kids are through our especially our um, HIV and education outreach program that we go all across the country and serve kids through that program. We're in studio right now with Eva Payne. She has been named the Santa Clarita Unsung Hero this time around, sponsored by Mercedes-Benz of Valencia. She heads up Project Kindle. Well, what do you see as Project Kindle's most important programs? I mean, what, what to, out of the things that you guys do, do you prioritize based on uh, need, or how do you figure out what's most important for you guys to do? Well, it really just depends on the time of year during the summer. It's our summer camps. So we have our day camp that we run here and we have two week long um, camps and those are for Camp Kindle which is our HIV and AIDS summer camps. So there isn't really anything that's more important than something else. Um, then we have our speak out program and that's where our kids go and speak in public schools all across the country and that happens during the school year. So in the fall and in the spring mostly. So it really depends on the time of year but we're constantly we have one program kind of coming up right after the other so it um, You're always prepping for the next thing. Always prepping for the next thing yeah and our, and our program and our organizations ever changing. I mean, we just look for the needs in the communities where we serve kids right. and we talk to families and we figure out what are the needs of those families um, and we try to create programs around those needs. 
How do you do this? How do you raise funds? Do you guys have a, a, an operating budget that you try and stick to within? Is it is it grant based? Is it? I mean, where does it where does it come from? Well, it's a little bit of everything. We have grants. I work. I probably write a grant every day, or I'm working on at least a grant a day. Um, and then we do benefits. We put on our own benefits, and we also have other groups that raise money for us. So third party events, individual donations. We have tons of individuals that donate to us, and our camp counselors, which are all volunteers, they actually raise raise money in addition to giving of their time for the week that they'll be volunteering at our various camps. So lots of different ways that we raise money to make these programs happen. Talk to me about the summer campaign and uh, you know how many people participate, what do they do in in the uh, in the summer camps? What what takes place during those? During the actual week of camp? Sure, yeah. Okay, so um, for our Kindle Ranch Day Camp, which is happening right now at Placerita Canyon, the kids are 5 to 12 and our focus is math, science, music and art. So that program we have lots of different activities there because a lot of our kids um, are dealing with autism. We have our activities are very short because we're moving from one to the next, and um, they're fun. So it's you might think you know science. What are you what are you doing there? But we have really fun interactive kid activities that um, our programs coordinator has developed. We've worked with other organizations to figure out what works best with that population. Um, she's actually our program coordinator, Erin, actually went out and visited every single family and did an intake to see what works best with these kids. And so we develop our program around the needs of, of our campers. So that's um, a basically a typical day is very go, 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 one exit, 20 minute intervals of various activities through those different um, subjects. And then you stop for 10 minutes and come on the radio and then you start your day. Yeah, again, right? they're actually packing up right now. So I got out of packing up <laughs> <All right. laughs> at the end of the day to be in this nice air conditioned. We picked a nice time for room. you. I guess yeah, so if you had you. to come by, this would be a good time to do it. <laughs> thank you, yeah. In, in general, do you think that the, the HIV, the AIDS situation has improved mm -hmm. since you founded Project Kindle? I mean, as far as treatment, as far as awareness, yeah. what, what do you see? Absolutely. For those programs, for Camp Kindle and Speak Out, that those programs that we run, you know, when we started out, kids were petrified about speaking about it. They didn't want to share their story with anyone. So as far as that goes, we've seen a huge improvement. Our kids are going out and speaking all across the country. Um, we're actually, there's a lot of hope right now in med medicine and even finding a cure or a possible vaccine. So we're hoping that in the next couple years, there's going to be an answer beyond just education for HIV and AIDS. It's really come a long way since the um, epidemic and everything hit in the late 80s and early 90s. How did you and your family uh, end up here in Santa Cruz? I know you got married, you started your family, you eventually moved out here. When did that all happen? How did you end up here in this valley? Yeah, so I grew up in Westlake Village, Agora Hills area, and then went out to college in Nebraska, and then we moved back. Um, we got married in 99. My husband and I have known him since the sixth grade, yeah. and we were looking for a city where we could raise a family, where we could actually afford to buy a home and um, we drove out to Santa Clarita and just loved it out here. It feels a lot like where we grew up, um, but a lot of younger families, newer brand new homes, you know, just the schools were good. So we said, okay, this is it. So that was in 2004 and we've been here ever since um, in the same area. We moved from one house 0.6 miles away to a little bit bigger house when we found out we were having the twins, um, number five and six at the end of, of our right. children bearing years. <laughs> <laughs> right, very good. And um, yeah, we absolutely love it, and we have no plans to ever leave. <laughs> and I hear you're not doing postgraduate work. What are you uh, studying, and where, and what? What? Uh, how do you anticipate that will help with Project Handle? Um, yeah, I'm actually getting my master's in leadership and management um, through the University of Laverne. I take my classes over at COC, um, which is perfect for me. It's just one night a week that I head up there and I get to do that. And I really wanted to be able to be better. I mean, I feel like I've learned a lot, sort of on my own as far as how to lead and manage an organization. But I thought, you know, this would be really great for me to get a master's in this and, and really take all of my skills to a new level. Um, so I'm at, I only have two classes left and then I'll be done. Um, and it's been a great experience and a really great program. It's great. How do you juggle all of this? I mean, you're, you've got six kids. You've got the uh, Project Kindle. You're going to school and, and trying to do all this together. What what other? I mean, how many careers more do you do you have? <laughs> how, what do you do in your spare time? I mean, do you have spare time? I do have spare time. You know, I have a lot of help. My husband is very, very, very involved. Um, he is like I, I couldn't do it without him. With our kids, with our organization, he works full time, but he's in sales, and so it's a little bit of a flexible schedule. 
and um, I'm a really good delegator. So I'm the one that comes up with a lot of ideas and then I find really amazing people to help execute these programs. So I'm not the one sitting there actually making all of it happen. I just find really good people um, to help make it happen and I just kind of deal with the fundraising side of it more than anything else. What's the most fulfilling part about what you do for other people? Um, I think the most fulfilling thing is getting to see the end of the week. You know, what happens on that last day of camp or when we leave that program and move on to the next program. When everyone sort of comes and it's, where do I go? What do I do? And who are these people? And by the end, um, they've become family. Right. And so that's that's really the best part. And how do our listeners find out more about Project Handle and how can they help? The best way is to just go to our website, project, P-R-O-J-E-C-T, Kindle, K-I-N-D-L-E dot org, like the Amazon Kindle, but not related. Right. Um, or they can give us a call, 877-800-CAMP, C-A-M-P, which is 2267. And um, lots of different ways online, and they can see all the different ways to get involved. Just reach out to us, and we'll find a, a good fit for them. Well, Eva, congratulations for being named a Santa Clarita Unsung Hero and continued success with everything you do, Project Thank Kindle you. and everything else as well. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate you coming in and uh, chatting about yourself. I know sometimes it's a little, you know, not the most comfortable thing to come in and kind of just talk about yourself for 10 minutes, but thank you for doing it. We're no pleased. problem. I appreciate it. Thank Eva Payne, me. she has been our Santa Clarita Unsung Hero, sponsored by Mercedes-Benz of Valencia.